Hello again. As you can see, new radio is in town and this exact model is Oymich. I think it's pronounced like that. Uh, it's made by Austrian radio company. They were producing models like this in uh, 1939 and 1940. This exact model is, um, is from the 1940 and it's uh, looking uh, quite well, thankfully to the cabinet, which is made of Bakelite. So there is nothing, nothing special about this radio. It has um, three radio bands. It has um, medium waves from 200 to 590 meters. Radio stations for, for this uh, band are colored in, uh, in white. Then we have um, green color for 16 to 55 meters. So when, you, when you're tuning radio stations, you're looking at, uh, at green labels and uh, at the end it has uh, 750 to 2000 meters and this is for for the long wave band i don't know if you can see here there's a needle going up and down for radio stations tuning and at the end, uh, very end it has um, something saying ta i don't know what that stands for but i can guess that this is for for the selecting gramophone input because it has it you will see soon on on the back side and this smaller button is for selecting for selecting radio bands probably you cannot see it now but if light, if um, illumination is good uh, it would be better later i will not turn it on uh, immediately because i just received this radio and i don't know if uh, if it's functional the guy who sold me this radio said that uh, uh, he did turn it on and uh, there was uh, a little bit of hum heard, heard in uh, in the loudspeaker but I will leave that aside and I want to, to have a firm examination of this radio before I make sure that it, it can go into 220 volts and to be turned, uh, turned on. There is um, one missing button here. As I can see it has only two positions so I guess that this is for, for the tone. This is tone selector and this one then should be for um, for the volume it goes quite smoothly so i believe it's uh, it's okay we will see that later and there is one click clack uh, switch at the front panel this is surely for for turning the radio on and off so the first thing i will i will check now is to see if this uh, switch is working if uh, fuse is probably okay and i will uh, i will check now the resistance um, here on the, on the power cord and as as i can see this is this is the original cable and it's uh, it, it looks very very nice so somebody really took care about uh, about this radio now i will measure the resistance it's set on 200 ohms which should be quite uh, quite enough now we'll see this those pins needs to be cleaned but I'll be able to measure something. Now it says nothing, it's an infinite resistance. I will put it in lower position. Also nothing, maybe just connection. No. So when I turn it on and off, nothing happens. It should measure, it should measure some resistance here, but it simply doesn't so if i would turn it on right now definitely nothing would uh, would happen before i continue with um, checking out for for the issue what is it i will uh, show you now the the back cover so you can see what's uh, what's on the back side of uh, of this radio <clears throat> So this is it. We have the back side now and there are already quite few interesting things. You can see, well I can say extremely la large loudspeaker inside. We will see if it has permanent or magnet or its electromagnet. Here as usual we have antenna, earth or grounding for this radio. This is, uh, this is input for, for the gramophone and this is output for external loudspeakers. 
I'm not sure at this moment if uh, we can plug in two or just one loudspeaker, but uh, I will check this later. I have the schematic as well. And, um, and over here is uh, power supply selector because uh, all of tube radios back then were made uh, to be compatible with the different uh, power networks. You can plug it in in 110, 25, 50, 220 and 240 volts. Right now in Europe standard is 240 volts. It used to be 220 but now is uh, 240 so nowadays this radio should probably be switched to, to 240 volts. I will measure the voltage uh, later and before, before I uh, put all, all the tubes in, in action I want to make sure that uh, power supply for, for the filament of the tubes is uh, at uh, correct values. It should not vary more than, than 5% so the first thing I'm going to do is to pull out all the tubes, then turn it on if it's safe, if I determine that it's safe. And after that, I will measure voltage on, on the filament pins and then I can decide if, uh, if I'm going to, to stay at 220 or I will move it to 240 volts. And this, is, this here is one uh, quite interesting thing that uh, they did back then. And I will show you why it's a, it's a safety plug you will see how and it's made for for easy opening this is what I like someone was uh, thinking quite quite wise back then and this is it you could now pull it off but there is this safety plug and it's a little bit tricky to take it off there it is now you can see why it's called safety plug because it's uh, it's manufactured that way that you cannot plug in this radio that it cannot be under high voltage when the back cover is taken off so while you're changing uh, those tubes uh, there is no no danger that um, that you get under high voltage it looks quite nice inside I just received this radio so I also didn't have a chance to, to check all the, the elements inside this is AZ1 legendary AZ sorry AZ11 it's double diode this is uh, this is the schematic of uh, of this radio it has ECH11 EBF11 in intermediate frequency part and this is ECL11 audio tube it should be back there. this is EBF this is ECL this is ECL 11 this is ECH 11 and this is EBF 11 so if all of those tubes are uh, functional if uh, they work nice it would be it would be a very very good thing now what uh, what I'm interested in is why it's not uh, showing any resistance when when I turn it on you can see clearly that uh, there is a fuse over here so the first thing I'm gonna do now is to check the resistance between both pins on, on, uh, on this fuse so here and here and I'm expecting short circuit here we will get the sound as well like this so let's see it says 70 ohms this is not okay so the fuse the fuse is okay but if you take a better look i don't know if i can focus on it yep if you take a better look you will see a lot of signs of corrosion of on on this fuse and i will try to to measure the resistance on on itself now it's better this is better contact let's check here it says nothing to make sure that you can see the instrument so let's just clean it a little bit and i will put it back
this now looks much better. Take a look at this side. Now let's clean it. Yep, much better now. I will put it back. I will eventually replace this fuse with a completely new one. Now this is better. So we can measure again here. Nothing. Now when it's turned on, it shows around 70, 80, 80 ohms and this is okay. What I'm actually measuring now is the resistance, pure ohm resistance of, uh, of the primary coil of the transformer here. Now it's turned off. Now uh, it's turned on. The other problem that might occur is that this cable is disconnected somewhere so I will check this as well I'm not sure if I can reach the inside okay I can so one pin is okay this one here and let's check the other one okay as well so now we are sure the cable cable is correct it's working it will work as as expected and this part here with fuse is okay it was just loose contact here so we would be ready to turn it on but i i'm not willing to risk to, to damage any of those tubes because they are quite rare and now i will pull off all the tubes but AZ11 and I want to check uh, direct current voltage to see if it gives the correct voltage and then I will measure measure the voltage on the filaments for for all of those tubes.